This video is sponsored by Raycon. RE2 Remake wasn't exactly the start of Capcom's revitalization, but damn, it just kept putting notches in their belt to become the best, most respected developer and publisher in the industry. This remake put everyone else's to shame, and then Capcom said, want to see me do it again? And then did it again with RE3 and 4 Remake. They're on a tear, and I'm loving every single thing coming from them, and can't wait to cover more games as we go. But before we get there, we gotta start at the beginning with RE2. There's absolutely no reason why this greasy-ass burger should look so gross yet so good and show off how amazing the RE engine looks. It looked like it was rotting. Yeah. She looked like a corpse. Like a walking corpse, man. <laughs> Sounds like my wife. The radio DJ and truck driver are probably how most of us would react to the early moments of a zombie outbreak. To us, this guy is just some Alex Jones knockoff. The zombie's gay? Does Capcom need to give us backstory on the truck driver that hits Leon and Claire? No. Do I feel bad for the guy because of it? 100%. And it's fun to set the tone with someone that's just a regular dude. It raises the stakes seeing the horror through this lens. Resident Evil 2 takes place in September of 1998. Of course Leon is listening to some grunge. Probably likes Nirvana too. Just a cute little emo boy. Capcom does a great job setting us up for the first zombie reveal. The store is completely dark, blood is everywhere, and the place is trash. We all know zombies and what's in there, and still Capcom gives them the respect they deserve. Very kind of this guy to point in the right direction, and kind of eerie that he's not panicking. Stay back sir, I got this. He did in fact not have this. And this is such a great reveal. It's visceral, disgusting, and violent, letting us know exactly what we're in for with this game. Someone say iconic? Speaking of iconic, I want to talk about Raycons. I am in love with wireless earbuds and have never gone back since I got my first pair in 2018, but there's something about Raycons that cut above the rest. First, they are incredibly affordable. Combined with the slew of features and quality, it's amazing how they manage to ship these powerful little guys in such a small package. And don't just take my word for it. Look at the 78,000 five-star reviews for these. I use these buds every single day as I'm addicted to listening to podcasts while I do housework or any other mundane task. Having them be water resistant is a godsend for whenever I'm doing dishes and need to pause a track or skip a song or turn on awareness mode from noise isolating when my partner needs something while I got wet hands. They're just incredibly convenient and come in this beautiful little charging case that has USB-C that offers up to 32 hours of battery life. I can go days without ever needing to charge them. And these are the everyday buds that I'm talking about. Raycon's flagship product that put them on the map, offering prices at half that of other premium brands. It's no surprise listening to them how they hang up there with the big boys in premium audio. Raycon is turning six years old and have expanded their lineup with things like the Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. So to thank everyone, Raycon is offering 20% off everything on their site with select products up to 40% off. So let's celebrate this birthday with their biggest sale of the year and go to buyraycon.com slash gaming wins and use code birthday to get 20 to 40 percent off site-wide what do they put at the t-virus pcp resident evil zombies aren't like your walking dead zombies they don't go down in one headshot but they're still slow as hell requiring you to decide whether it's better to run or take them out and then being bullet sponges in other games normally is an issue but here it adds layer to the survival horror on how we manage our resources knowing just how tough one zombie is and much like the friend that drank too much and took a power nap on the couch, they can get a second wind and keep on going. Especially later in the police station, you're constantly on edge if that zombie you killed will come back to bite you in the ass. Literally. This is the only place where we'll be using this key, but it's a good way to introduce items and how to use them. Don't shoot! Get down! I really enjoy how Claire shows up every so often in Leon's campaign and vice versa. They're both on their own, doing their own things, but their paths still cross every so often. It's a brilliant way to extend the amount of content in your game, repurposing all the assets for a parallel story. It's been 20 years since our last ship to Raccoon City, if we don't count Operation Raccoon City, which we don't, and it's such an awesome sight. I love RE7 and 8, but this sign represents a return to our roots, and I miss it! After some rocky launches like Street Fighter V and NVC Infinite, Capcom wasn't what they used to be. But with Resident Evil 7, Monster Hunter World, and Devil May Cry 5, they reestablished themselves as the powerhouses they once were. Without those games, we wouldn't have gotten this remake or the others that followed, and I am so happy we did. RE2 is an almost perfect remake for newcomers or veterans to the series. Honestly, calling it a remake is almost a disservice to the game because outside of the story, it's a brand new experience. This is such an awesome opening sequence too. It almost feels like an intro to an HBO special or something. In classic Resident Evil fashion, RE2 wastes no time throwing us into the action. And putting us in the city at the height of the outbreak really ratchets up the tension even more. Even if there's beasts all over the shop. The police station offers more safety than the streets of the city. Don't believe me? Just ask Jill.
Claire's redesign was a bit controversial when it was revealed, but I honestly love it. That red leather jacket looks amazing. And I know y'all were simping too, don't lie. You all right? Are you okay? Claire's reaction to the situation at the gas station is quite a bit different from Leon's. After all, Leon is training to be a cop. Claire is just a normal civilian. It makes sense that she'd be a little bit more freaked out by it. Live around here? No. I'm looking for my brother. He's a cop too. He's probably off punching boulders somewhere. He'll be fine, Claire. And if you didn't like the redesigns, Capcom added the original outfit for Leon and Claire, along with quite a few others. They even added an Elsa Walker skin for Claire who is the original female lead of RE2 back when it was Resident Evil 1.5. And it's super cool that they had include such an obscure little detail. The RPD is like a beacon of light in the dark zombie infested streets of the city. And had we gotten there a little earlier, it might've offered some safety as it used to be a shelter during the initial outbreak. But unfortunately that couldn't last. Plus the building has such cool architecture that really stands out from the others. Probably because it was originally in a museum, but we'll talk about that later. Resident Evil is known for its puzzles and this remake has some good ones, but most of them were not just handed the solutions like these, but we still got a problem. Where the fuck are they? Seriously, I spent way too long wandering around this police station that I was losing my mind. The RPD is a pretty big place, but we get to explore in bite-sized chunks as to not be overwhelmed. And being given what to look for, but no real sense of direction makes exploring the building all the more enjoyable. <laughs> Marvin is a bad ass. Dude has a nasty bite wound and is still putting down some zombies. I wish we could have spent a little bit more time with him. He would have been a better mentor to Leon than Krauser in the wholesome department. Leon still carries this knife with him in the RE4 remake. It creates a little continuity between the games to show just how much this experience affected Leon. If Marvin hadn't given this knife, it's likely Leon wouldn't have made it out of the RPD. <sighs> Wonder what could have done that. The level of detail on this guy's face. Well, what's left of it is absolutely gruesome. Exposed muscles and tendons. Capcom really wanted this guy to look gross and turned the gore up to 11. Between the main guy missing his face down the hall and these giant claw marks, it's pretty safe to assume there's something bigger than just zombies here. It's an awesome tease to the liquor enemies later that'll show up, but more on them in a bit. Being able to barricade windows adds a nice layer to the survival horror aspect. Fewer zombies lumbering around the halls lets you focus on the bigger problem later. And like, caught zombies, you know? Actual footage of me getting snacks at 3 a.m. That's cute. They set up a little welcome party and a game to learn his squad mates' names. I love puzzles like this one. It's a neat little in-universe reason for it to be there. It isn't super difficult, gives us a nice bonus for doing it, and offers great world building and storytelling through gameplay. It has everything you could want out of a puzzle, and it is absolutely RE2 firing on all cylinders. Developing photos in a dark room isn't something I was expected to be doing in my zombie apocalypse game, but they're not just your grandparents' photos. They're showing hiding places for some sweet, sweet loot. I wasn't expecting this remake to be so puzzle focused as I played RE4 Remake first and boy, it is very different in its own good way. I love the little jingle these portable safes do when you complete them. Hey, you can't park there. Hey, what that mouth do? This guy is called a licker, hence the tongue. They can climb on any surface, are sneaky as hell, and they just sit on the ceiling waiting for you. But much like Helen Keller, they can't see shit. If you're quiet, you can sneak right under these nerds. I can't because I'm bad at the game and didn't realize this until like the end, but you can, I promise. In addition to all the puzzle solving, there's also a handful of safes and lockers around the RPD that aren't for the story. The codes are scattered around the station or you can play the guessing game until you get it open. But either way, the rewards are definitely worth it and pretty necessary to survive. The system progression in RE games has always been so satisfying. <laughs> We need to get you to a hospital right now. Did we already know Marvin was going to turn? Absolutely. Does it make it hurt any less? Not at all. Marvin did everything he could to give Leon the best shot to escape, even as he's got one foot in the grave. Everybody deserves a man like Martin in their life. I love these little animations for unlocking doors. It just screams classic Resident Evil and I'm here for it. They may repeat sometimes, but Capcom made a lot of unique zombies, and many of them were inspired by the designs of the original RE2, so like, paying respects. It's good to see your face though. Me, trying to flirt. Can you really blame her? Have you seen RE4, Leon? God damn! The liquor is definitely one of my favorite RE enemy designs. Just wearing the birthday suits, the giant claws, and exposed brains makes for one creepy ass dude. 
Somebody really needs to get a repair team in here. This place is falling apart. Meanwhile, I bet you can't guess where we need to shoot them. I love the arena of this first fight with Birkin. There's plenty of breathing room, but you can never be 100% sure where he's going to be coming from between the heavy fog, machinery, and tight corridors. It creates a good deal of tension without being too difficult, and it really makes you feel like an underdog playing this cat and mouse game, struggling with a little bit of ammo that you do have left. And in this fight, especially, it's really cool seeing him succumb to the G virus, mutating more and more as the fight progresses. <gasps> And, and it seems like a bit of Birkin's humanity is still in there crying out in pain for help. That'll come into play later. And, 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 talk about feeling outmatched. Not many games offer the sense of helplessness when fighting enemies, but in RE2, you never feel properly equipped to take on any target ever, but you must nonetheless. And it makes that so much more satisfying when you finally do overcome that enemy. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. These mutated pups are an RE classic. It's great seeing them back in such gruesomely high detail. The trench coat was a perfect red herring to reveal the iconic cocktail dress later in the game. And honestly, the outfit is great. It really fits the spy aesthetic. People were upset when she was first revealed, but I had faith that Capcom would do it right. Now, sunglasses, at night, and inside, that's how you know she means business. He's the bastard that locked me in here. I'm sure he had a good reason. Really showing how green and naive Leon still is. An older Leon would have heard this guy out. Just give me the f out of here. Holy sh! Not even a brick wall can stop the tyrant from crushing this man's skull effortlessly. Ah! <laughs> Our boy just fell in love. Hello, mother. Mr. X does not need an intro cutscene. We've heard him stomping around and seen him smash a dude's head like a viper. We know what he's capable of, and the intimidation is elevated by revealing him during gameplay. He's practically a Terminator. This guy is relentless and makes everything harder to deal with. Order zombies you have to shoot through, X gonna give it to you. Trying to sneak past a liquor, you better hurry the f up because he's right behind you. He puts a time limit on every interaction you have in the RPD. Extra win for how absolutely f hilarious it is to watch him slap zombies for getting in his way. Also love that shooting his hat off makes him move faster. Bro really loves his hat. And he's never explained to the player. No tutorial pop up about his mechanic. First time players might just think he's a boss and lay their ammunition into him to no effect. And we're forced to learn how to deal with him ourselves. RE2 is amazing for the absolute lack of hand-holding it has. All the score of this game is intense, but there's something about X's theme that's extra terrifying. That opening high note that announces his presence, combined with the steady drum beat that makes it feel like impending doom is coming our way, and it kind of is, I f***ing love it, it's so good! We knew it was coming, but man does it suck seeing our boy Marvin like this. Should have given him some herbs, Leon, we all know those can heal anything. Yeah, this is getting old. Saving your ass, that's twice. Come on, Ada. Maybe he'll return the favor letter. Terminate. It's my f***ing daughter. Man, they changed the interaction with Kendo a lot. Long story short, Robert Kendo was a gunsmith who made weapons for the Star's operatives. Originally, he goes down in a horde of zombies, but this just hits so much harder. I can't even begin to imagine how a father would feel in this instance. And for only having about two and a half minutes of screen time, Ken Lally really conveys the anguish Kendo is feeling. Whatever it takes to save this city. Count me in. Whether he's a rookie cop in over his head or a federal agent wearing a shirt a few sizes too small while suplexing grandmas, at the end of the day, Leon really is just a stand-up dude trying to do the right thing. The paths for Leon and Claire are pretty similar up to this point, but this is where they start to diverge a bit. Can't have a female horror lead without her newt. You know, the movie. Tiny girl, ginormous alien. And having such different story beats really helps each playthrough feel unique. Plus, it'd be a bit weird third wheeling on Leon and Ada's first date. After beating the game once, there's a second run for both characters, changing the way you navigate the station, enemy encounters, and a juicy secret boss, complete with a new ending. So this game, just like all other RE games, has such great replay value. Come here. What are you gonna do to her? None of your business. Maybe the reporter was right. Dude is a creep. I think I'd rather have the dogs. But having different enemy encounters is another way of keeping each character fresh. You may be wondering why Police Station has so many statues, a grand library, and old paintings. It's definitely not because the Chief is a history buff. It's actually because the RPD used to be an old city museum, which might actually explain all the secret passageways with it being a history museum. It's nice to see how some of the rooms in the station are only accessible to Claire. I can't tell you how long I tried to get into the Chief's office on my Leon run. I ran through that bitch so many times thinking I missed something, but come to find out, my princess was in another castle all along. <laughs> I'm not sure what I was expecting to happen, but it wasn't that. Hello? Hello. Do you want to play a game? The angle from the security camera really reminds me of the fixed camera angle from the original RE games. Nice little nod to their roots. 
I don't know what the hell you feed him, but he is too damn big. An average day in Florida. And I love when Resident Evil really embraces the campy, wacky weirdness of the original games. What other franchise has giant zombie spiders, catfish, and depressed fishmen? A zombie sewer gator would just be so out of place in another game, but not an RE. We loved it for that. <laughs> Oh, I gotta win the sauce. Oh, yeah? Hey! Why did she burn this body all dramatically and then run away like a little kid that did something naughty? But it could also be a nod to have in the original Resident Evil, you had to burn the bodies of zombies so they didn't turn into a crimson head. There it is! And she lost those dumb Karen goggles. Ada's always got some neat little spy gadgets. I'm currently playing through the Separate Ways DLC for RE4, and she's got no shortage of crazy shit up her sleeves. Ooh, that was so smooth, Mr. X. He even gave up the chase. Ain't no way he couldn't have come through that window. We never get to see whatever bioweapon stubbed its toe in the room with Ada, but I've always wondered what it might have been. Maybe another mutated animal like the gator? What do you guys think? Three days later. This puzzle is a pretty simple one. I managed to solve it pretty quickly, but this one is completely randomized, so no internet cheats. The orphanage Sherry is taken to was actually run by Umbrella for obtaining new virus test subjects, and by the look of these test tubes, medical equipment, and cameras, it seems like they might have done testing on the site as well. It's crazy to think they may have created Mr. X or even Nemesis from these poor little kids here. Please! Time to teach some manners. Uh. Get him, Sherry! The guy had it coming from a mile away! Oh, you... Damn, I didn't know what that was, but she turned his ass into Two-Face. Cherry's section is purely stealth and puzzles, which is a nice change of pace from guns blazing and the rest of the game. It doesn't overstay its welcome, and hiding from the chief is goddamn terrifying. Where you going, Cherry? I told you to stay put. And that is all thanks to Sid Carton's performance. He gives Iron such a stern, assertive, and just horrifying voice. He just sounds like he's ready to fly off the handle at the slightest inconvenience. <laughs> Oh, daddy protecting his little girl. Goes to show how strong a father's paternal instinct can be. Man has a mass of mutating flesh and murder, but still had enough sanity left to keep his daughter safe. Dude just came through the wall juggernaut style, but still feels the need to walk around the fence. Bro is so dedicated to being intimidating, but so respectful to our blue collar workers. I love it. <laughs> Damn, did not see that coming. Where are you going? Look, I don't have time to play 20 questions. Everything's under control. And that Birkin is the definition of take her job too seriously. I guess you'd have to be if you develop world ending viruses for a living, but like, damn, don't you give a f about your own daughter? Your husband is an actual monster and he saved her life twice now. And what are you doing? 20 minutes later. Award to the grossest enemy type in RE2 goes to. These guys are nasty looking and hard to deal with. It's better just to try and escape them than fight, but it's easier said than done in these cramped sewers and adds variety since we can't just shoot our way out of every situation. Raccoon City sewer system is a f***ing maze. No wonder no one knew there was a secret umbrella lab under the city. There's really no sign of them down here, except for the cable call with the giant umbrella logo. I really like how interconnected the level design of the RPD is. Even all the way down in these sewers, there's a shortcut back to the station. It almost feels like a metroidvania, getting new items to unlock new passages, weapons, and upgrades. The chest in order to me really digs this puzzle. It has a different solution in the first and second run, with the second run being quite a bit more difficult. Resident Evil's known for its puzzles, classic RE especially, and Capcom does a great job making each and every one feel unique. Ada. I was getting worried there for a sec. Good thing he owed you that favor. I'm not just gonna leave you. Not like this. Oh, Leon, always the gentleman. My wristbands are ticket to ride. Nice. Where'd you get that? Borrowed it. You're not fooling anyone, Ada. Some umbrella employee's probably freaking the f out right now. <laughs> if I'm gonna finish this case, you're the last hope I've got. I'm not just gonna leave you here. What if you're attacked? What if you need help? Oh, sh! She's playing like a fiddle, Leon, but still. Game respect game. Eventually. The lighting of the RE engine is insane. Anytime you've got to whip out the flashlight, it is f dark. Helps make the atmosphere so much creepier. It's always hard to tell exactly what's waiting for you around each corner. I love the variety of weapons on offer in this game. Leon and Claire both get entirely different loadouts with the multiple pistol and shotgun choices, SMGs and hand cannons. There's also some unique weapons like the taser on steroids, which is great for dealing with those stupid sewer monsters. It's fine. I didn't want to go that way anyways. G Burke into electric boogaloo. The second Birkin fight is super solid. It has a lot tighter quarters than the original, giving a lot less room for error, and having to use the environment to win this fight doesn't make it feel like a carbon copy of the first one. What are you doing? I'm here to help. Oh god, those somber strings leading into the soft piano. On one hand, Annette is right. The world could very well be at stake if the infection spreads outside of the city, but like, <laughs> help your kid first! The score perfectly captured the emotion of the scene. 
All I really wanted was for her to be home more. I'm sure that's a feeling a lot of us can relate to as kids. Our parents did the best they could to keep a roof over our heads and food on the table when we just wanted to spend time with them. But the Birkins, they took that to the extreme. Uh. What kind of Resident Evil game would it be without a secret underground lab? I know they're not in every game, but it's pretty synonymous with the franchise at this point. Greenhouse area was actually cut content from the original game. It was so damn cool seeing it fully realized. The whole place feels, well, alive, and it kind of is. All the plants in the room are infected with the T-virus. Love that it gives nothing but bad vibes, but you can't help but admire the beauty of it. And while I'm on the subject, these vine zombies are creepy as shit with their little vertical maths. High pitched shrieking and orange pus balls. They kind of remind me of the regenerators from RE4 with how they'll just keep coming unless you hit their weak points. Luckily, you don't need a special scope to see them. These wavelength puzzles make me feel like I'm aligning radio towers in Insomniac Spider-Man game. And you know I'll be covering Spider-Man too, so make sure you hit the subscribe button right next to the like button so you don't miss it. You're telling me you weren't involved in this. Yes. But we never meant for this to happen. Road to Hell is paid with good intentions, right? But how good can your intentions be when you're testing a virus that does that to people? I feel like William's head and arm still being present at the beginning of this scene represents the last little bit of his humanity and killing his wife is what causes the virus to completely take control, making him nothing but a mindless monster. This fight took me so many tries in my first playthrough. He's big, he hits hard, the music conveys the sheer terror I felt fighting him as well. The female vocals at the beginning give a sense of awe, the horns and the vocals are ominous while the strings give a sense of desperation. The score takes an already awesome fight to the next level. So that's all this was. Attention. I was just some pawn to you. My boy can't get to break, beat to hell, falls in love, gets heartbroken, loses a mentor, all in the span of like six hours. Why does every underground lab have the self-destruct sequence? I blame Metroid. Oh no, he's hot! This fight is intense, it gives no room for error. The time limit only ramps up that intensity. Conveniently placed rocket launcher. That's how we know it's the end of an RE game. How the f did she survive that fall? I need to know. Oh, he's thinking about her. Me too, but how does she live? A few inches later. Claire's being the mom Sherry always wanted. We love to see it. This puzzle always messes me up in repeat playthroughs, and I feel so dumb every time I figure it out again. Birkin's got some interesting taste in decor. Claire pulling up like a cowboy to a showdown. It's past your bedtime. One life passes, but another is regained. I really appreciate that Annette's final act here is saving Sherry from the mess her parents caused. I love that the final gun Claire gets is a fucking minigun. She always had a little heavier firepower than Leon, but this is just ridiculous. And giving us one last showdown with Birkin gives just the right reason to use it. Claire! My reaction when they announced the RE4 remake. It's great seeing them all happily riding off together into the sunset. Sherry deserves it with the night she's had. All right. Resident Evil 2, where to be gun? This is such an amazing remake that I feel really set the standard for what a remake should be. RE2 does a phenomenal job reframing the original story while also rebuilding the game from the ground up. It feels familiar, but there's so many new scares and so many new places to explore and so many shifts of the gameplay. You, you can just tell that Capcom really wanted this game to succeed with how much love they put into every little detail. The gameplay is somewhere between the tank controls of classic Resident Evil and more modern titles, and it's such a joy to play. Every gun feels unique and fun to use, and they all have their different uses in the gameplay. I can't tell you how many times Claire's grenade launcher saved my ass from a liquor. The interconnected level design is highlighted by the incentive the game gives you to return to previous sections, and that gives our boy Mr. X more time to shine. If I didn't make it clear earlier, I love Mr. X! He's such an intimidating presence, and the first time I played through RE2, I'd pucker my asshole every time I heard him stomping around close by, and squeeze it so tight trying to escape him. This game is perfect representation of early Resident Evil games. It has the strong horror elements, but also the silly one-liners and blood-pumping action. It's an amazing game. I'd recommend to anyone that enjoys horror titles. How fast are your hardcore runs? Have you beaten the Tofu Survivor? Let me know down below, and remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza.